why are we talking about the food? I think there is legend, there are stories since the more it has been said always, we are what we eat. And in fact, even the diseases as well, which people get it, it's all also quite a lot responsible or determined by the food which one is eating. Whatever specialist you may be, cardiologist, diabetologist, whatever field you may be, it is important. Who remembers this guy? Does someone remember? And next. Next slide. So in this, we can see some pictures. Does anyone remember what is who are these famous people actually? So I think people will remember this is the famous Ambani son and this is the famous singer which is said to be the world's fastest piano a keyboard player. So they all have transformed themselves. So what has been the secret behind them? Of course exercise is also quite a lot responsible but one of the biggest factor, one of the most important factor is diet as well. So as I said it, its implications the next, the implications of diet, of food, what we eat is not only in cardiology, diabetology, but also in blood pressure and cholesterol management. Next. So, some of the other important things uh, we also need to see other than seeing the food is, uh, of course, as I said, physical exercise dietary sodium intake and also moderation of the alcohol intake or adoption of DASH diet. DASH diet we will be talking soon in details. But even here as well when we try to look carefully, so one of the most important, some of the significant reduction in systolic blood pressure can be achieved with weight reduction and also with the usage of DASH eating plan as well. So what happens? What are the lifestyle changes which happens which are beneficial in reducing weight? So we need to decrease our time when we are sitting more, for example, while watching television, playing video games, or even the time which is being spent online. Similarly, we need to increase our physical activities like walking, biking, aerobic exercises, or even dancing or soccer or basketball as well. It's a wonderful exercise. Similarly, we can try to increase the dosage or amount of portion what we are eating in the form of snacks or the meals as well. And not just the quantity, but also the portion size or the frequency. How frequently are we eating those high calorie diets? Next. Today, in today's world, we all have been talking about some of the superfoods. So they are, hello, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. So uh, we all keep on talking, what are those best foods which we all should eat to keep everything healthy? So there is something called a superfood. So what are these top 15 superfoods? This is a list compiled by Mayo Clinic, which I am going to share. Next. So as we can see in this slide, these are fishes. So these fishes are not just yummy to eat, but also they are uh, some of the biggest resources for protein and also for omega-3 fatty acids and vitamin D. And if uh, one will have to really pick up on one, that which is the best fish, then my bet is going to be on salmon, I would say. And other fishes are also there, which is good in uh, these uh, omega-3 fatty acids is tuna, mackerel, herring, trout as well. Next, then comes is uh, nuts. What are these nuts, which are really good? So like almonds and walnuts. These are not only good for your hunger, but also they contain a lot of those essential amino acids. And some of the oils which is there in them also 
is not only good for your brain but also for your general body and metabolism as well. Next, then comes is the berries. Berries. So what are these berries? Berries are these full of hard, healthy phytonutrients and contain a lot of fibers. And especially among these, I would really mention about blueberries or strawberries, Dr. of course. Narendra, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. Doctor, is this the slide correct which I'm showing? It is like a fish picture. Is it the one? No, no, no. Keep on going next. So right now we are talking about berries. You will see strawberry on the picture. Okay. Am I right? Yeah, strawberry which you see. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that is okay, it. Okay, doctor. Okay. <clears throat> because there are a lot of pictures and all, there will be no confusion. So you can keep on going to the next, as I said it. Once if I talk about something else, it is about next one, okay? So that's why I said it. You can try these berries, not only with cereals, but also with yogurt. So they boost your metabolism. They are really good in fibers. Next. So what about these flax seeds? Flax seeds has been traditionally quite a lot oftenly used in uh, the traditional diet of not only Indians but also of the North Africans as well and it has been rediscovered that they are really rich in the omega-3 fatty acids also fibers and phytoestrogens which uh, really boost your health in fact so you can even um, take the powder form or also you can use the whole seed itself while whenever you make your chapatis or bread even when you cook your vegetables or curry as well, you can just pour them actually. Next, what about the oat meals? So the oats, I think you all are recently hearing in a lot of your advertisements in your television set as well. So these are really food nutrient powerhouse. Next, then comes the beans. Those beans can be black beans or those red beans but they are equally rich in fiber b vitamins and also minerals and other ground stuff as well really a lot of good stuff in fact next i know um, there are several states or several parts uh, uh, where or yeah there are some beliefs in which wine consumption is not advisable but it has been shown, scientific research has shown that up to uh, two glasses of wine, for which is considered to be good for men. Just a second, just a second. So as I was talking, so up to two consumptions for men is fine and one for women per day, okay? And why? Why is it advised? What is the reason for that? Any any guesses? Anyone would like to try? Because it improves the HDL cholesterol. And why HDL cholesterol is important? Because HDL cholesterol is the one which is said to be the good cholesterol. Okay, so it will tend to decrease, it will tend to decrease the lipoproteins in the peripheral areas and all. And it will similarly uh, ch decrease the chances of coronary artery disease. So that's why it is important. Next, so in this figure what we can see is there are marinated tofu. And you can of course add them up with stir fry fresh vegetables which can always be used for lunch or dinner. So these marinated tofus are pretty popular although in Japan, but I would really advise it can be used over here as well. So next, what do we see in this figure? So these are a lot of those colorful vegetables, right? Red, yellow, orange. So what are these vegetables actually? Carrots, sweet potatoes, red peppers, and accord squash as well, which are not only really good in carotenoids, fibers, and also vitamins, in fact. So the so always I would I would also advise to try to use colorful. More color in your vegetables, the better it is. Next, 
So after we know about vegetables, what about the fruits? So fruits like oranges and papaya, they are really rich in beta carotene and also electrolytes like potassium, magnesium and also fibers. Next. What? Does anyone remember who is this famous cartoon? Who is this guy? This guy is called as Popeya. And as he rightly used to say, spinach packs a punch. And it is true indeed. And why is it said? Because it is rich in iron. It is, has a lot of fibers as well, a lot of antioxidants as well. So you can use it in sandwiches and salads. Next. So next one, what we see is these are tender, sweet asparagus. So what happens is these are really filled up with mighty nutrients as beta carotens, folates and fibers. So and even the amount of calories which is supplied by these asparagus is really, really minimum. Next, what about these tomatoes? Tomatoes is available not so costly and they are really good. There are varieties like the sun-dried varieties which is which can be used also in the winter months. They are really good for vitamin C, lycopenes, antioxidants and also the carotenes, alpha or beta type. Mm. Next. Next. Now this is what is the dark chocolates. The dark chocolates is amazing, has amazing benefits for not only heart protection, but also for stroke prevention as well. But it has to be taken care that most of them is 70% dark cocoa. Next. So this is broccoli. Broccoli is really globally regarded as the superfood. And why is it? Because it's rich in not only nutrients but also vitamin C and E and also potassium, folate, calcium and fibers. So you can uh, dip it in hummus and you can keep on eating it as well. Next. So now we know that what are the things which we need to eat. But the big question is, what are the food which we need to avoid? So in simple words, you should avoid what is white, white food, like which is processed and refined, especially like flour, rice, pasta, bread, crackers, cereals, or even simple sugars. Because they are really high in calories, they are highly refined, they do not have any fibers. And even similarly, on the other side, you should try to use more of natural, unprocessed white food. Un unprocessed white food means onions, cauliflowers, turnips, white beans, and white potatoes. Okay? So they are, they need to be used actually. So it is as simple as that. But of course, try to avoid deep frying them. Okay? I think not just the Indians, but also the world over, the people are very fond of Indian food. But what are the things you need to be cautious about? Like everything has its own good things and bad things as well. So the good thing about Indian food is, yes, <coughs> they have a lot of grains, which is high in fiber and less animal protein. Okay, and they also use a lot of legumes and vegetables, which is a very big plus. But the problem is a lot of these food is prepared in ghee, which is like clarified butter or fried or used with coconut milk or fat. So most of them is saturated fat in fact. So that's why it can be a little bit problematic. So what are the tips whenever we are eating Indian food, Indian curry, Indian restaurant we are going so what are the things we need to be careful? I would really suggest try to use is salad. Otherwise use uh, yogurt with shredded vegetables. And also 
whenever you are ordering something try to order one protein or vegetarian dish which is especially low in saturated fat and calories and if you're uh, you have to be a little bit more careful for sodium then you can skip the soup and you can choose a chicken or a seafood rather than beef or lamb similarly uh, you should uh, choose uh, dishes without ghee and why did I say you should try to skip the beef or lamb because red meat is not good for heart I will really emphasize that next so this is a table which uh, beautifully summarizes what you should what you should try to avoid and what you should try to keep on taking actually okay so as i as i have said it you have, you have to try to avoid taking samosas korma or curry or pakora or paneer or fried and butter stuff but on the other hand you can yeah take uh, as i said it more of vegetarian food steam stuff uh, less oily cooked stuff like this so that is the best option in fact okay so we also need to know what about the food content of the food what we are eating so there are a lot of food which is really high in sodium so what are those foods stuff so if we come across fish or meat which is smoked so something like smoked turkey or smoked salmon there it's not really good otherwise some of these uh, sardines or fishes which is stored in high saline water or tomato juice in fact the stored ones in fact or similarly those frozen or canned peas or canned spinach canned carrots so they contain a lot of salt so I wouldn't advise any of these especially for what kind of patients if you are trying to talk about a chronic renal failure patient or even to a hypertension patient and the other commonly used ones which we use in our day to day life is potato chips salted crackers similarly biscuits pancakes even those who the people who are really fan of mcdonald's okay so these are also those our idlis soya sauce cheese as well it's really high but even on a natural basis as well there are a lot of food which can contain high amount of sodium which we need to be careful and what are they as we can see in this figure apples avocados avocado is also one of the wonder foods actually it's really awesome and amazing thing actually mangoes as well pineapple bananas papaya as well can have pretty high amount of sodium naturally so next time whenever you go to the supermarket whenever you're trying to do a shopping i would really suggest you to read those labels so what does it contain how much um, milligram of sodium does it contain how much milligram of potassium does it contain to make it a simple understanding a teaspoon salt contains almost 6 grams okay which is around 2.4 2.4 gram of sodium and our recommended dietary allowance is around 2.5 gram of salt not more than that next so as we can see in this figure this figure is about egg yolk or egg white it's a very uh, this slide has been taken from the Howard um, it was uh, it's a big confusion thing is egg good for our body or not so let me tell you one an egg a day does not increase your risk of heart attack or stroke or any other cause of cardiovascular disease but however it is said no more than three eggs per day per week actually is better especially if you have diabetes or 
if you have some other heart problems as well and uh, yes a uh, lot of times what happens is what do you eat those eggs with so for example if you're eating it with butter ham jam it makes a big difference but of course if you're eating it with salad or nice stuff and all so it's always really good and it is pretty helpful in fact next what about lean meat lot there's a lot of confusion is lean meat good or not so what happens is lean meat what is lean meat actually is meat with relatively low fat content so for example like skinless chicken or skinless turkey or red meat is better okay rather than the whole meat in fact because what happens is the fat on the pork chop contains almost two-third of the fat so that's why skinless part portion is always better even if you're trying to eat meat you should try to eat with the loin part or the round part and why is it because they contain less fat and that's why it is much better and red meat you should try to avoid why is it because it contains more of cholesterol and saturated fat okay compared to the white meat and similarly the boneless chicken or turkey is some of the best because they contain much more high amount of protein next one of the other key questions is always about tea what about the tea so I would always say it like this tea should be advised but up to two to three cu cups a day not more than that and why is that because tea contains really good amount of antioxidants it is less stronger compared to coffee they also reduce your risk of heart attack and stroke and green tea especially does reduce your weight gain as well it protects your bone boosts your immunity and also helps for cancer and that's why it was this slide is specially for the green tea lovers so the green tea has a lot of antioxidants and they have really wonderful effects on the brain decreasing the cancer risk as well and incredible benefits in fact and also reduce the risk of infections and also improve the dental health so in fact it has all there are some studies which showed that it may also reduce the blood sugar levels so that's why it also is beneficial for the diabetic people as well so similarly then, then the next question is always about after tea is coffee what about coffee how good is it so they are not only energy boosters but they also have a liver protection mechanism and they also help to prevent depression skin cancer diabetes prostate disease parkinsonism or even alzheimer's as well similarly after sodium sodium is important but what about the potassium so we need to understand uh, that potassium deficiency may cause hypertension bone loss or even kidney stone disease as well so the always the best thing is if you are eating three portions of potassium eat one portion of sodium okay so what are the natural fruits or natural things which is rich in potassium are like avocado bananas potatoes spinach beans citrus juice and fish and then meat and potatoes are healthy okay but nothing beats a potato i would say especially for potassium so especially roasted vegetables are really nice and as we all know lentils soups chickpeas and black beans are also really good and then the next question always is like a lot of people ask how are frozen vegetables 
compared with the fresh ones? Isn't it a big question? A lot of people, they tend to ask. So I would really suggest if frozen vegetables have been frozen in a good way, which is most of the times, then they tend to lock in the important vitamins. And in fact, the concentration of the nutrients as carotenoids or lutein or even the antioxidants in the fresh and the frozen vegetables are almost similar. So fresh vegetables are really good, but if they are refrigerated ones as well, it's equally good. Now, the other thing, one of the common questions is milk. How about milk? So for women, it has been shown that the higher intake, due to higher intake of associated calcium and vitamin D intake, it tends to lower the risk of hypertension. And in fact, although it has been shown that if someone is drinking moderately, it may increase the blood pressure also. And it is a proven fact which has been shown. Now coming to the DASH diet. So it was really popularized by one of the American president's physician, personal doctor, whose name was Dr. Dean Ornish, who popularized the concept of dietary approaches to stop hypertension, which is called as DASH. So in which, which says is to follow hard, healthy guidelines to limit saturated fat and cholesterol. And it tends to focus on increasing intake of food rich in nutrients that are expected to lower blood pressure, mainly minerals like potassium, calcium, magnesium, protein, and fibers. So what it is actually? Why? What is DASH diet, as I said? And it has been widely adopted and recognized as well. <laughs> Sorry. So if you look carefully, so these are the type of food which needs to be included over here. So what are these type of food is? The grains need to be more, then comes the fruits, and after that will come as the vegetables, and the amount of low fat of fat-free dairy should be even lesser in fact. And then you need to have good amount of you need to have good amount of dairy meat as well. To give you a sample of the how it looks like. So this is how it looks like your table if you are trying to follow a dash diet. So for example, when you are trying to have a dash diet of 1600 calories, this is how it should be looking like, if you can see it on your screen. The different food items and all. I don't want to go into too much details because we need to focus on a lot of other topics as well. So, this is how, as I said, it, it looks like the it needs to, the DASH diet contains of green, vegetable, fruits, the non-fat milk, the oil and seeds and sweets as well. Why am I showing this important figure? There has to be reason for that if I'm showing. So for example, I know in different parts of in different a lot of regions where coconut oil and palm oil is widely used. So but what has happened is this article from Freeman in came in Jack 2017 where they said it, coconut oil is high in saturated fatty acids and raised cholesterol. So you should try to avoid it. But similarly, virgin coconut oil may have some beneficial effects, but it is not the best. So that's why on an overall basis, the best things are green leafy vegetables, plant-based proteins, and 30 grams serving of nuts per day is really good. And I had said it, berries, berries with more than three servings per week is really great. And yes.
Yeah. Sir, uh, which oil will be good, sir? I would say extra virgin olive oil. It is the best. Olive oil is the best. Also. Yeah, that's why I will uh, tell you now. Uh, now I'll come to that cooking part. Actually, you asked a very no. good, very good question. So now the that's what the answer you will get it in my next slide. Best oil for all. So this is the yeah. list uh, which contains uh, like I would say the olive oil is the best, but then comes the canola oil, then comes the safflower oil, then comes the sunflower oil. But when it comes to cooking, the cooking, what happens is, see, over here as well, you can see there's difference of saturated fatty fats, polyunsaturated fat and monounsaturated fat. But and how will you differentiate? Saturated fats are solid at room temperature, but unsaturated are is always liquid. Okay. But and then now coming to the best oil. And now I'm coming to that. What is extra virgin olive oil? So what happens is they are very high in antioxidants, but extra virgin oil, the right ways to use them is only in the form of salad dressing. Okay. You should not heat them. If you heat them, you're destroying them actually. So what happens is then comes, okay. So whenever you are trying to use cooking, especially I know those Indian cooking or South Asian cooking, you take the temperature to very high temperature. So for that, so there is cooking grade olive oil. You should use that, I would say. Or canola oil is pretty good as well. Or even safflower oil or sunflower oil is widely available. So that's why I would say don't use extra virgin olive oil for cooking or frying. It is literally cancerous. So there is cooking grade olive oil which is better. Otherwise, as I said, it canola oil you can use or safflower or sunflower oil, you can use it for this. And even in that, I would suggest you should keep on rotating between these different types. For example, yeah, for uh, whenever you are using, uh, you are trying to make salad, I would suggest use virgin olive oil. But whenever you have to fry if today I'm frying, then you can use canola oil, maybe even sunflower oil as well. Similarly, if you're trying to make uh, some curry, then maybe just use a little bit of mustard oil as well. Because now I'll tell you another important thing. Mustard oil usage has been associated to be to predispose highly for the coronary artery disease and also complete heart block development so that's very unfortunate but a very true thing actually so i hope the doubts are cleared so now here comes the canola oil which i was talking so it, it has very high smoke point so it is really good for baking and also for frying as well so here it comes so this is my secret formula this is what i would say to you guys if you want to enjoy the heart healthy benefits of olive oil but find the flavor too strong you can also mix one is to one ratio of canola and extra virgin olive oil similarly now coming to walnuts walnuts has they are amazing in the form of omega-3 fatty acids you can also use its oil as well but it's really its oil can be very costly and but very nutritious now the big question and this slide is from time magazine about ghee okay so ghee it's a very it, it, this slide is taken from the time magazine i hope you are aware so what it has been shown research has shown that it is also among the 50 new healthiest food of all time with recipes okay it's high in vitamins and also can be used as a alternative to cooking oil or butter. So I would really recommend to use it not too much, maybe in a single day for one teaspoon, that's all, but not more than that. And now coming to the big debatable question of coconut oil, which I already showed you the evidence, but 
it does have a wonderful flavor but what i would really suggest is it has also very high amount of saturated fats as well so i would really um yeah recommend to slightly avoid it although on an international basis i will say it like this there has been a bit bigger lobby as well which has been trying to make popular the mediterranean diet with olive oil but yes they have evidence as well to be healthy so so far till the time evidence favors coconut oil we will have to take the side of olive oils so on a simple basis and what about the dark chocolates which we said it as well so dark chocolates they are amazing they not only decrease your blood pressure but also they increase the polyphenols in your body in fact so it's really nice but to mind you the chocolates should be taken in the form of dark chocolates and if possible without sugar not those sweet chocolates i would say whatever next whatever food or what which we take or eat um there are some is yeah uh, misconceptions as well so for example a lot of people they tend to think that chocolates are associated they are pretty high in caffeine but it's not always true like this so what you can see it like this it can in fact uh not so high in caffeine then similarly it's not even so high in saturated fat but i would really suggest if you are using really sweet chocolate yes of course the calories will be pretty high and it is a good source of magnesium copper iron and zinc one of the other things i would say is remember there is difference between chocolate and candies chocolate is the one which is made of the dark ones and from cocoa not the one with sugary candies okay a lot of people especially to the kids we, we always say like this that uh, no uh, that they will always also be making is they make cavities so but how do cavities are formed we need to understand that cavities are formed when the bacteria in the mouth is able to metabolize the sugar and starch from whatever diet you are taking so what happens is so whenever you eat anything they will be able to make acid and this acid then eats the enamel of the teeth which will be causing the cavity so whatever you eat if you are having a good oral hygiene there will be no problem at all never so this is another big misconception the chocolates cause acne which is of course not at all true and you know it now why even about the weight gain as i said it it all is matters what are you eating it with is it having too much of sugar then yes the problem will be there and now one of the newer concepts is about paleo diet what is paleo diet so paleo diet is what they have said it is you need to eat like a caveman in the sense and what will happen is you tend to become uh, leaner and there is less chances for diabetes heart disease cancer and all this so in the sense the diet contains too much of high protein very high fiber and which will make you lose weight without cutting the calories so that is what is the paleo diet concept and yes you can eat eggs nuts and all these all uh, to if i am asked to summarize whatever we are eating so what we can see is eat the nuts seeds healthier oils including olive oil and maybe coconut oil in traces but what are the foods which you have to avoid because we need to understand right now our sedentary life and we are not even farmers so what we have to say we should try to avoid is dairy dairy means the whole dairy thing so for example you can of course always 
eat the uh, toned milk. Toned milk means fatless milk. It's really good. Refined sugar, avoid it. Potatoes as well, not too much you should eat. Salt, refined vegetables, oils as well. Refined, I would say. So you should try to avoid it. Okay. And you need to be careful what you are eating. So if you really want to, someone keeps on talking like what, how to do, lose weight. So I would suggest be careful what you are eating. Exercise well. And plan up your diet well. So eat more frequently in lesser amount. And I am sure you will see the benefits. Okay. And another important thing is it's not always necessary that the good food is more costly. No. It's not always like this. Apples, for example, they may be costly, but no, it's not true that apples is the best fruit. There are much cheaper fruits as well, which contain similar or even better nutritious food as well. And in a simple basis, as I said, it try to mix your oils, whatever you are eating. So that always makes it really nice. And as I was telling about the mustard oil, I already said it. Yes, it is good for amazing for deep frying. But use it in traces. But as I said it, the problem can be is complete heart block and coronary artery disease can be a little bit risk higher. So this summarizes and finishes all my slides. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Do you all have any questions? So, sir, uh, um, which one is good, sir? Rice, wheat? This is a routine question like all the patients are asking. Yeah. I didn't get your question, please. Sir, uh, which one is actually we are saying that you have to reduce the rice amount like that, you know, sir?